All right, it's 6.32. I'd like to call this meeting of the Finance Committee to order for Thursday, March 23rd, 2023 in the Wakoit meeting room. Um, first order of business will be the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, if we can have a moment of silence for those who have lost their lives in service to our community. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone for public comment? Seeing none, we'll move on. Uh, we'll entertain a motion to approve the meetings of our meeting on Thursday, March 16th, 2023, in open session. I move that we approve the minutes. Is there a second? Second. All right. Any discussion on the minutes? Take a vote. Uh, Glenn? Yes. Lee? Yes. Richard? Yes. Jamie? I abstain. I abstain. All right. And I'm a yes. So it's 401. All right. Lee? Okay. Um, I would like to move to amend the agenda by replacing the new business agenda items with the following agenda items. Number one, take action on new articles in the executed town meeting warrant. Two, review, discuss, and approve draft article explanations for the Finance Committee report. Three, review and approve the draft opening letter for the Finance Committee report. Four, review and approve the proposed charts and tables for the Finance Committee report. And five, authorize the chair to make final edits, to move and have final approval of the Finance Committee report proof for printing. I second your motion. All right, uh, just to let you know, this, this is because the deadline for everything is tomorrow. We've got a lot more to get through tonight than originally planned when I filled out this, the agenda last week. So that's why we need to make make these changes. All right. uh, any opposition to the motion? No. All right, hearing none, passed by unanimous consent, we are, we will, new business will consist of that new agenda order. Thank you. All right, uh, nothing for appointments and hearings. Communication correspondence. Is there anybody from the select board with anything no. to say? All right. I'm here to answer questions if you have any. All right. Uh, anybody from the school committee? Seeing none, we'll move on. Uh, that brings us into old business. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the planning board regarding articles what are now 30, 31, and 32. Introduce yourself for the record, please. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my name is Mary Wagan. Um, I am the chair of the planning board, and I'm joined here tonight. Uh, by Karen Faulkner, who is the vice chair of the planning board, and Evan Lair, who is our town planner. Um, I believe we have this as a PowerPoint. Um, I don't know if you want to show that um, or... Given the time and everything yep, we've got to go fine. through, I just, if you can maybe just summarize. Um, yep, I'll go through this very, very quickly. Yep. And then we can open it for questions. <clears throat> yep, so as many, as you know, many of you know, Massachusetts is encouraging the production of solar energy to generate clean and cheap electricity. It's protected by, these, in, these solar energy systems are protected by Mass General Law, Chapter 40A, Section 3, which prohibits zoning um, ordinances or bylaws um, to prohibit or unreasonably regulate the installation of solar energy systems. 
except where necessary to protect public health, safety, and welfare. Um, so basically, state law protects these systems. Um, as a result, if a town doesn't adequately zone for them, they, with a clever court case, they can go anywhere in your town, regardless of public health, safety, or welfare. So the state statute was put to the test um, with a court case, <clears throat> excuse me, regarding a Waltham decision. It's Tracy Lane Realty LLC versus the city of Waltham. And in 2022, the court overruled the Waltham decision denying access an access road to a solar energy facility that was cutting through a residential area because Waltham didn't allow solar energy systems in residential. But the court said because Waltham zoned too little of its land for solar energy systems, it overruled it. So Waltham only zoned 2% of its land um, area for solar energy systems. So the court overruled that decision. But in the decision, it also noted that the preservation of residential character of neighborhoods is a legitimate municipal purpose to be achieved by local zoning. So when this all came out, the zoning board, that, excuse me, the planning board looked at, you know, our own zoning. Did it protect the town from being in the same situation? We looked at whether we have enough land zoned for solar energy systems and whether we protect public health, welfare, and safety. So if you go to this, this um, page, the top chart shows you what we have right now, which is basically solar systems everywhere in town and larger systems only an industrial eye. So there's some people that say, well, that's too little. It's only between two and 8% of our land mass if you add in or take out what's on Joint Base Cape Cod. What we're proposing is to expand and allow medium and larger systems in commercial C1, C2, and industrial I where there's robust performance measures um, for those. And those are listed out later on in the, in the presentation, but some of those robust performance measures are visual impact mitigation, healthy setbacks, a landscape plan, a lighting plan so that neighbors can't see the facility, vegetation management, which is really important our bylaw requires vegetation to be kept debt minimum so it doesn't cause a fire. Because I guess if you let things, if you go to this page, if you let weeds grow too much, they'll grow up around the panel and they'll actually catch on fire and the whole thing will go up in smoke. Um, and that we don't allow the removal of that vegetation by chemical means because we live on a sandbar and it'll go right into our groundwater. We require fencing that looks like residential fencing. We require land clearing and soil erosion control. Back in the day, I guess these places would just come in and take the topsoil off and then put the solar panels on. And if these have a, a life, a lifespan of like 15 to 20 years. Eventually this land is gonna be used for something else, so we have to maintain the topsoil there. Storm water management, maintenance is required. These things cannot sit there and just fall apart. Um, we also prohibit solar panels that are made with PFAS um, in Mashpee and require a decommissioning plan just in case this company goes out of business. The town isn't on the hook to clean it up. That surety would put aside money in escrow, et cetera, in a, in a form that the town treasurer um, approves of, um, so that if anything ever happened to that company, we would have money to clean it up. So that's, that's it in, the, in a nutshell. Um, we have our public hearing on April 19th regarding the zoning bylaw and any other zoning bylaw amendment at 710. That's Wednesday, April 19th, and town meeting is May 1st, as you know. So um, I know you wanted us to keep it short, so <laughs> I'll entertain any Thank questions. You. Now for questions. Where does the conversion <laughs> take place from, uh, from the DC power that's generated by the solar panels to the AC power that's normally going to go into the, into the grid? Is that done somewhere else? That, that's a good question. I think there's transmitters that are on site 
Um, they don't mean. All, uh, the inverter, that, is that what you're talking about? The inverters, yes. Yeah, inverters are usually on site. All inverters, energy storage systems, and transmission systems are, are regulated here. They have to be 200 feet away from a residence. So I'm assuming that they're on site. Big arrays like this are usually hundreds or thousands of watts. Okay, so the inverter, if it's going to be far enough away, you still need to convert over to, to AC power at some point. At some point in time, I'm going to I'm going to confirm that for you, but I have a feel that we we rely very heavily on the state's model bylaw for this, and they recommended a very healthy buffer for things like inverters, energy storage systems, and transmission systems. So I'm assuming that it's typically they're typically on site. They have to be on site. Yeah. So we allow them. We'll allow them, but they have to be at least 200 feet away from a residence. I, I think that's for safety reasons. It is. That was a tough question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I did I have, okay. I have tougher ones, but you don't want to. Any additional questions? I mean, this picture was taken, where was this? That's just off the internet. Okay. So that's an abandoned, um, site. And so you can see it it's just, it's, it, they just disintegrate. Um, and back in the day, they used to have a lot of PFAS in them. Now there's products that you can um, get that don't have PFAS in them. Um, we're also looking into um, systems. If we can regulate PFAS, maybe we can regulate systems with respect to heavy metals. And that kind of stuff. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to look on that. I think that we're gonna be back in October with some tweaks to this. But um, because of the lawsuit, um, we felt a little bit vulnerable. The town's a little bit vulnerable to um, aggressive, large-scale systems that would have no required buffers. You how know. Do you, how do you integrate this with the power lines? The power line system. I I don't know. You have to coordinate with the electric companies to do that? Yes, yes. the utilities, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have the, on page 28, uh, paragraph 5, utility connections. You, on page 28. So just read it. Within, yeah, within set, setback distances and accept where soil conditions, location, prop, property shape, and topography of the site or requirements of the utility <coughs> provider prevent it. All utility connections from grid entity solar energy systems shall be placed underground. Electrical transformers for utility interconnections may be above ground if required by the utility provider. How big will it be, so these uh, arrays be? Is there any? How big will the systems be in yeah. total? Yeah. So we have th a scale. So anything less than 1,750 square feet in area. No, no, in wattage. Hmm? Electrical wattage. How, how big can they be? The electrical wires? Wattage. Wattage. There you go. Wattage. Yeah. Yes, it's in here. So the, the state's model bylaw actually defines me, small, medium, and large-scale so, uh, solar energy systems using like per kilowatt hour yeah. measurements. Yeah. Uh, the planning board, when we discussed this, decided to go with the uh, land area square footage of the overall panel so that it was understandable for most people. You asked about utility connections earlier. It's my understanding that obviously any solar energy facility would need to coordinate with the utility for yeah. connection. But furthermore, it's also my understanding that the grid can only absorb so much power generation from solar energy facilities. And if there aren't adequate substations in any particular service area, um, that could potentially restrict the deployment of these facilities and would be determined at a case-by-case -case basis uh, alongside the utility companies if there, A, is capacity for the grid to accept the energy uh, and whether or not um, uh, the facility is, is uh, too large uh, to accommodate the power generation. But the, this bylaw does not define a maximum cap on the amount of power to be generated. Because we have some pretty good sized ones right now. The ones at, at uh, the Barnstable Fair area, 
That's a pretty good size array right now. Yeah, so this bylaw, currently we don't allow any uh, solar energy facilities uh, of medium or large scales, of any, something you would consider commercial scale in the town other than in the industrial districts. Um, this bylaw would accommodate systems of, uh, that, that are in excess of 40,000 square feet in area. So a relatively substantial facility would be accommodated this bylaw only if it's adequately zoned in the appropriate district and the utility connection is feasible. Now, I believe you said you currently, we currently have about two to eight percent area that could be, have solar arrays on them now. Larger. Larger ones? <clears throat> Larger. And, what would and that's in our industrial zone. Yeah. A lot this, of our industrial zone is on Joint Base Cape Cod. Yeah. So. And, so, and this would increase the percentage to? I don't exactly know what the percentage is, but it's C1, which is red on the zoning map, mm -hmm. and C2, which I don't know if you want to point out where it is. I generally describe the C2 in zoning districts as uh, on the eastern part of town, Polar Cave, and the western part of town, Andy's Market. Um, so the light pink on uh, that particular map and the tracer lane lawsuit is is really about in, in adequately encouraging uses 40 chapter 48 section 3 is about encouraging uh, solar energy systems and in the case uh, the decision by the judge really said that your restrictions are an effective prohibition and as a result are um, not encouraging the use so uh, we include language in this bylaw that in is intended to encourage the deployment of solar energy facilities to these districts and discourage them from the others actually the language uh, mr. Mm -hmm. Pettengill on the land court decision when the uh, developer prevailed and the, the judge looked at case law and looked at the statute 40A section three, which says, and you've got it right there, no zoning ordinance or bylaw shall prohibit or unreasonably regulate the installation of solar energy systems or the building of structures. The building of structures would have been, is for the developer, the access road, mm -hmm. which is zoned residential, but he had a commercial purpose. And that's why Waltham said no. Anyway, he, he went up to the Supreme Court yeah. and he prevailed. So really what we're doing here, we, I don't know if we would have done another bylaw but for Tracer, because Tracer just forces us, it compels us to do a bylaw to protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? My, my only question is, how will this be presented at the town meeting so that the ordinary person who comes who doesn't know a lot about solar energy, like me, um, will understand exactly what we have to do. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping the moderator will allow us a short period of time to explain this, okay. right? Because it's kind of reverse logic, right? Yeah. So um, it's kind of like the chapter 40B, right? You don't have enough affordable housing, it can go anywhere. Well, everybody kind of gets that, but this, this is kind of new to people. I think, too, that we should probably put out um, some type of informational flyer so for people at town meeting to pick up and read. Um, and maybe we can do a little uh, video or something. I don't I haven't asked Evan yet, that yet. But um, Evan does PSAs, so we, the planning board might join in on that, uh, delegate it to Evan or do it ourselves. But just to kind of explain that whole, that whole thing. Thank you. Okay. And I think the simpler the better, even though this is not simple, <laughs> but, but you know, the points that you raised about landscaping and setback and all those things that people get concerned about. Oh, is it going to be too close to my house? And Can you house. see it? Yeah, yeah. And that whole decommissioning. Really Thank you. <laughs> I think, Lee, that um, we have to kind of, now I'm starting to get it, we have to back off on Tracer because when you start explaining that case, we just have to say something that we're compelled to do this because of a Supreme Court case without getting into it at all. Because sure. Sure. It's, it's a very convoluted case and it says many things and it's like, what does this mean? And we don't know and that's why it could be ripe for litigation. Mm -hmm. Okay. How many systems do we have now?
Uh, there are no private facilities other than the facility on top of the landfill, which I think is a, like a lease the town offers to a developer. So we have the capped landfill. We have solar on all the roofs. We have solar in Mashpee Commons in the parking lots and um, Christ, the King. Uh, Christ the King. But there are actually no medium or large scale facilities currently in the town. And this does not regulate the carports, right? Um, and maybe we'll put that in the summary too. Yeah. The, 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 most people that we've talked to about this don't want to cut down trees to install solar. We, we, we're not at the point with the state statute to do that. So, um, but people are comfortable having them go on buildings and in parking lots. And the only way to put them in a parking lot is with a carport. Some people are starting to, oh, they really aren't that good looking. Well, that's why we, our zoning puts parking in behind buildings and have to keep that vegetated buffer. And um, so. Uh, I mean, the Barnesville Fairground has got a, a pretty good size array there now. And Christ the Church has also got a pretty good size array as well right now. Right, and I don't notice the one at the church. I think that natural buffer and it's a little down, it's depressed a little it's in, bit it's too. In the parking lot. Yeah, I don't really notice that. The one at the fairgrounds I do, and I think that's because their, their buffer is not vegetated as well. So um, you never know when you really super need that vegetated buffer. So that's why we always push for it in our special permits. Anything else? <laughs> Thank you Thank very much. Thank you. <laughs> this very should be important. an annual thing. I've always <laughs> wanted to do this. Good idea. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Next, um, moving on, uh, moving into a discussion of petition articles. First up, we have Ms. Suzanne, Susan Dangle, <coughs> who, is, who is with us over Zoom, um, to talk about her two petition articles. Ms. Dangle, the floor is yours. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay. Um, Susan Dangle, 762 Pituit Road. Um, I'm here tonight to explain the two articles that mirror the articles um, presented by the Conservation Commission. I believe that's, um, for your record, 35 and 36, and mine are 38 and 39. They're not really just from me. They come from organizations that I've been working with over the last couple of years. Um, I'm a founding member and president of Save Massey Wakey Pond Alliance and a new member of um, the newly formed Massey Pond Coalition, which represents not only Massey Wakey Pond, but the Schumann Pond, Sam Stewart Pond, and John's Pond, as well as Martha Pond. And we're trying to work to advocate for clean water, particularly in regards to fresh water, which doesn't necessarily get all the billing because it's subject to phosphorus, not nitrogen. Um, however, um, we've been you know, pretty excited about what was going on in the town when everything first started. But if I can share my screen with you, is that possible? You should be able to. I think, I think I'm allowed to. Let me see if I can pull it up. What do I want to show you? Let's see if this is, is this image showing? Is there an image showing for you? Not yet. Okay. Optimize, share. This is it. Hold and select. Does that work? Share. There we go. No. There you go. Yep. That's my, that's my dock for the last two, Fourth of July. That's Mashby Wake Pond. In fact, that's the north side of Wakey. That is cyanobacteria. I've sat on my dock for the last two holidays of 4th of July and not been able to go in the water. I have seen um, my neighbors who rent their house out have people staying there with their dogs chained up to the, the chairs and their kids sitting Indian style on the dock just looking without being able to do anything. So. We were very excited when um, in 2021 we heard about the sewer plan. 
We also heard about, um, a, a, went to a roundtable discussion in uh, November where all of the regulatory boards came together and all decided the urgency around clean water was now. It needed to speed up, not slow down. Unfortunately, that regulatory commission meeting had never come back to fruition. It was wonderful. It was a public meeting, and the exchange of ideas was inspiring. Since that time, um, many articles have been talked about, about going on to town meeting, and then suddenly they just disappear. They get pulled off without a lot of discussion about why, and things regard things like the Conservation Commission's very solid, no-cost ways of helping our waters just disappeared off the warrant. So we as a group, the Mashpee Ponds Coalition and Save Mashpee Wake, we said, you know, we've got to put our own petition forward because these things keep getting pulled off. And really, and since 2021, we haven't had a vote on clean water or at town meeting. So that's why our, our articles are there. They're there because we want to vote. I mean, last October we showed up for town meeting, I think it was October, um, and the, San, um, the Santua Pond horsepower thing was still, so made it through. We were all excited to be there to support them in saving their pond. And that night, just before the town meeting, it was pulled. So this is why we're here. I mean, we want the town to vote on this. Clean water seems to be present in all of the um, the planning discussions, the long-term planning um, discussions that have been going on. You hear people talking about it. We're seeing red seaweed on Pompanessa Bay. Recoit Bay was recorded by Dr. the late Dr. Brian House as unable to sustain life. I mean, these are things that are very, very serious. So. Um, we're there for interns. That's our that's our thing. Um, I'm happy to open the questions. I just wanted to show you one. Um, I want to share one other thing with you. This. Can you see this one? Or not? I can't see it yet. yet. Uh, this is the root system of a lawn. This is the root system of a lawn, and think of the many lawns that come down to our, our wetland. And this, next one, this is the root system of vegetated buffers. These are the roots that go deep down into the groundwater. They catch the runoff from the street on Couture Road. They catch the runoff from my leaching field. They stop things from going into the water. Things like nitrogen and phosphorus. It, there, it's not just because you just want something in between the waters. There's a real reason for it. These are the kinds of plants that thrive without irrigation. They thrive without um, any, anything. They don't even need fertilizer because they are able to get it from the groundwater. So these, these two articles that these uh, folks from conservation have put forward are very sound in their science and um, the other groups in town have joined us. Mashpee Clean Waters is completely behind this, as is the Mashpee Environmental Co Coalition, and I expect more to follow. Um, I did want to highlight, lastly, before I finish, and you can ask any questions, um, the, there is a, a conversation Zoom meeting hosted by Mashpee Clean Waters next Thursday, um, March, March 30th at 7 p.m., it's on their Facebook, and I'm sure we'll circulate it around. But that will just be an open discussion with people who join in about these two articles and what it means to you and what it means to houses that are already developed versus land that's not developed. Please feel free to comment. It's free. You just need to register to get the link. And um, I believe that the conservation folks and um, Ashley Fisher will be again doing a presentation April 4th it's moved to the library at 5 p.m. So there are two more opportunities and hopefully even more discussion between now and town meeting. But that's why we're there and hope you understand our, our reasoning. Thank you. Thank you very much. You. Any questions for Ms. Dangle?
And seeing none, again, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was actually I'll some informative. Aaron, I'll be seeing you on the other screen. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, next up, uh, is there Mr. Jalawi? If you will come up. <coughs> you just introduce yourself for the record, please. Sure. Uh, my name is Matthew Jalloway, and I live at 128 Deerfoot Circle in Mashpee. Thank you. Uh, Sue did a great job of laying the groundwork. I'm in the same boat. I'm in the Mashpee Ponds Coalition, and my petition is also uh, piggybacking off of recommendations that conservation has made in the form of bills. Um, my bill specific, or my petition specifically has to do with Santua Pond, and it is to restrict motor power on the pond to 10 horsepower and to reduce speed to headway speed or six miles an hour, which is essentially keeping the boat uh, moving quickly enough so that steering doesn't become an issue. Um, again, Sue did a really good job laying down the groundwork, and she came with some pictures to really show everyone the state of our water. Um, and quite simply put, we need to really do something about it at this point in juncture. I have friends who will come visit me from different states, different parts of the country. I had friends come down from Korea this summer, and every single person that I bring to San Tua Pond to walk is mortified at the fact that we can't use our waterways. We can't swim in that water. We can't really do anything with it. Um, so I would, I, the reason we brought these petitions forward is that we would really like to see some change and see these voted on as soon as possible so that we can start making some actionable change uh, in our waterways. And uh, that's, uh, that's about short and sweet from me. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, thank you very much. Awesome, thank you for your time. You're welcome. Right. Uh, Ms. Barbie. Good evening, Mr. Chair and Finance Committee. If you start by just yes. introducing yourself. Lynn Barbie, 73 Surf Drive. Um, I could repeat everything that Mary said, but I won't because you don't want me to. <laughs> um, but essentially, my petition mirrors what her, what she was talking about, uh, about solar. And I think just I want to explain why this is an issue for me and why I wanted to make sure that that what the planning board wants does get on the warrant. You, uh, before, our names didn't go on petitions when they went in front of the town meeting. It just said by petition. But you probably remember the solar overlay thing that happened with uh, Next Grid and all of that. Mm -hmm. Well, my petition was the one, and I actually have the May thing here, was the one that said, we need performance standards because they weren't in the solar overlay and we need open space. And that's what I was asking for as part of if that solar overlay went in because I, it, it was, they were proposing it um, right on the Childs River. And there was none of that in what they were proposing. And so I thought, well, this is not good. We need to have performance standards. Like, all of that and setbacks from the waterways. And so when the planning board started, and, and of course, you know, those n never went through. They withdrew them, yeah. right? Um, so when the planning board started this, I said, well, I will, you know, I'll, I'll take what they're drafting and, you know, try to present that as well um, in order to make sure that, it, you know, it's on, the, it's on the warrant and that we have a chance really to talk about how important, I, I always, I have to say, I kept saying back then, I like solar. It just has to be done right. Mm -hmm. And that, that proposal from last year and the year before was not being done right. So I think this is great that we are creating a way to really encourage solar. I like solar, um, but I really don't want to see it on residential land. We don't have a lot of residential land left unbuilt 
in this town. And I don't know if you all have been up uh, Katuit Road into Sandwich where they literally cut down acres and acres of trees mm -hmm. on a residential plot mm -hmm. and put in a bunch of solar. I, I don't want to see that happen in Mashpee. I want to see people build housing on residential land because even as nice as solar is, we really need the housing. So that's what my, what my vote, motivation for presenting, which is essentially the same article as being presented by the planning board. And I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, it just, I live down the road from that sandwich area. So I was, I was quite stunned when I, I saw the, them flooding down. I figured it was housing going in there. And when I saw what they were doing, they were like, really? <laughs> I was quite, quite shocked. I know. Well, I drove up there maybe a month or so ago, and I saw the habitat housing going on. I was like, oh, good, you know, there's housing. And then there's this huge swath of, anyway, um, and so even where they wanted to do the solar before, half of that was residential and half of it's commercial. And I think we should get some housing in there. That would be great. So anyway, that's, that's my motivation for this. And really the details, my, my article is essentially the same. Yeah. Okay. Any other, any questions? So is your article going to appear on the warrant as well as, as, the, as the planning boards? My, my goal is just that it'll appear on the warrant and just to make sure that, and I, I had actually talked to Mr. Miller, our moderator, and he said, well, will you table it if the other one gets passed? And I said, probably I will, yes. Okay. I'm, yeah. I know it's I know it's towards the end of the night, so I don't. And I've been to some long town meetings, so I I think as long as the other one gets passed and you know it's clear that people are understand it and everything, I won't have to add more. Our um, confusion but, was that there was there's multiple articles covering the same thing. In, right. In, where's the real one? Is it well, I do have to say that, and uh, Magellelli was. The Santuit article that came up in October was tabled minutes before the meeting. I, you all probably remember that. I do, because I was sitting next to Ashley. Um, and so they've been working hard trying to figure out how to get that right. We don't want any of that to happen with these other important articles. Mm -hmm. And since it's by individual petition, it can't be. So, But I'm counting on you all to support it. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, thank you very much. I, right, we appreciate thank it. Thank you. All right, next we have uh, Mr. McCarthy, who is on with us on Zoom. Hi, I'm Ben McCarthy from 60G Place. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Hey, um, thank you, Mr. Chairman and Finance Committee uh, for the invitation. And I'm here to talk about Article 45. Uh, which is basically a repeal of the 2018 uh, changes to the regular place bylaw that were made. Um, I, I, I think the most important thing is that all this does is return us to a bylaw that we had for 30 years uh, or more. Uh, it doesn't really add anything or change anything. It brings us back to what existed in 2018. Um, there were hundreds of houses in Mashpee that were raised and replaced under that bylaw. Uh, my house is one of them. Uh, my house was rebuilt in 1994. Um, I live on a very small lot uh, in, in the neighborhood that's, that's very dense. So um, that, that bylaw worked for quite a long time. Um, I, I'm concerned about what happened under the current rating replace. Uh, that we've kind of gone to uh, subjective, what I call subjective zoning. Uh, it's created a lot of uncertainty in the zoning process, which I think is bad for the town and bad for the town's finances. Um, the town's party to multiple lawsuits today. Uh, one of them was actually uh, a summary judgment against the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, there's millions of dollars of property that's, that's tied up because of this bylaw right now. Um, and I, I think it, it, it creates the, the issue that any investor or home buyer would have uncertainty if, if their purchase was safe or not. Um, 
I think that, well, I know that um, this bylaw was determined to be defective by a land court judge. Uh, it, uh, it misses uh, legally required language, which includes to the neighborhood. And the court case uh, states that, that it's in contradiction to Mass Law Section 48, Section 6. Um, and in short, um, it was a little poorly thought out. It was rushed. I, you know, it was kind of hurried through, um, and it is resulted in this uncertainty around around zoning. I, I I know, and I believe you guys, I'm sure, understand that a home buyer or an investor is making a very large financial decision, and they need to have certainty. Can you still hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. This is, you know, kind of the fun part. I mean, we kind of have, you know, it's like a box of, ch box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get going, and that's just not good for any of us. The buyer, the seller, the town, they need to know uh, very clearly what, what, what's going to happen and what the rules are. So I'll move on. Um, this, the rules are in place 2018. It's done a lot of damage to our waters. Uh, many of these projects sit right on the edge of the bays or on the ponds. Um, this, this, this results in something called a short time to travel. Wastewater travels three to five feet a day in sand. So these projects very quickly move very large amounts of wastewater straight into our estuaries and ponds. Um, we are already out of compliance. We're over our TMDLs. Uh, we have the state coming after us already. Uh, you know, doing, doing things that increase our nitrogen load going into our waters, um, it's just going to end up costing us even more money to take it out. And what's really the shame of it, and I think what, what this board should consider, is it actually transfers the burden of that wastewater from the home buyer or builder or investor onto the town. It, it, the state is coming after the town to clean this up. And so anything that puts more water in, into the bay should be done very carefully because we and all the taxpayers in Nashville are the ones who actually end up paying for, for that. In, in a lot of ways, you guys are finance guys, you get it. Uh, the developments under raise and replace, many of them are, are arbitrage on wastewater. Uh, they're arbitraging building and construction and, 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 and profitability on that project to pushing the cost of the remediation on, onto the town. Um, I think it's relatively unfair as well. It creates disharmony. I don't know where all you guys live, but if you live close to your neighbors and they have a one-story house that's, you know, a little bit close to the lot line, you could wake up one day and find a 60-foot wall that's 35 feet high. Um, and I, I also think it's unfair to homeowners associations. Our homeowners association is now spending $100,000 uh, a year to remediate the drainage from these projects. Um, and so, We've had this bylaw for 30 years. I think it worked fine. Um, I don't believe that it's true that you can't rebuild your house under uh, the existing bylaw. Um, I know that's said. Uh, there's some details to it. it it's, it's, it's not really the, the truth. It's kind of a bit of a, a way to scare people against it. And at the end of the day, and I'll, I'll conclude, I think the 2018 rules of place law creates a greater liability for all of Nashville's taxpayers. It impacts the average people who can never afford these projects, who can never rent these projects or buy these projects, who end up with the tax bill for cleaning it all up. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions for Mr. McCarthy? I have a question, Mr. McCarthy. Um, you mentioned uh, that structures could still be altered under 174-17, uh, continuance, extensions, and alterations. I'm not familiar with that. Um, how does that work? Did you repeat that? It's a little difficult to hear. Oh, you, you couldn't hear me? Could you, could you repeat it? He couldn't quite hear you. Okay. I, I, um, I heard you say that something about altered structures under 17473? Yeah, the, um, you mentioned that structures could still be altered under uh, section 174-17 called continuance, extensions, and alterations. And I'm not familiar with that. How does that work? 
I can hear you, Mr. Chairman, but I can't hear that. Yeah, that Lee, why don't you come over, come over here? Okay. I can answer well, that. Okay. I can I can answer that. Okay. So um, that section of the of the bylaw mm -hmm. um, is the is the piece that Mr. McCarthy was talking about that it's existed for 30 years. Okay. Right. Yep. So you can expand, improve, and there's another word um, your your non-conforming pre-existing home if it's within the uh, setbacks for that lot. And you can do that by right. Okay. So what was happening was, and, and Glenn, correct me if I'm wrong, people who wanted to create something different with, out of bounds of that, they were, they were requesting variances from the town, from the Zoning Board of Appeals. And finally, there was a court case about that, saying you can't, you can't do that. You, you, you can't, you're, you're, you're not meeting the strict test for a variance, because variance is supposed to be like, you have a lot, you have a boulder in the middle of your rock, in your lot. So you, you can't put your house there, because there's a big boulder. So you, you need special permission to, to place your house someplace else. Um, so on, a, on advice from town council, that raise and replace bylaw was put in from 2018. Um, it's a special permit. From the, from the ZBA, it's a very powerful position that the ZBA is in, and um, Mr. McCarthy is claiming that it's detrimental to the neighborhood in general. Um, yeah. Does that explain? Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. Did yeah, I do I okay, I Glenn? You, you, you can, it, it's, a, it's a, you know, the, the great zoning language, and new nonconformity versus expansion and alteration of an existing nonconformity. Um, and it, it, it's really important to detail that you can expand and alter an existing nonconformity. Um, but what is a new nonconformity? The zoning board says they're not creating any new nonconformities. Well, the, the bylaw in Mashpee is that you're 25 feet off the street, right? So if you have an existing house that's 24 feet off the street, you're out of conformance. So, you would think that if you're going to rebuild your house, you would keep it at 24 feet. But that's an existing nonconformity. You can expand that. So you can now take that one foot off the street. Okay? So that is not a new conformity. It's the expansion of an existing nonconformity. You may have, in a lot of neighborhoods like we do, you may actually have a neighbor whose house is two feet from your property line, which is 10 feet from your living room. Okay, and yeah, let me just give it a second. You, you may have a neighbor who's, who's 10 feet from your property line, which is 10 feet from your living room. Okay, so you would think that no new conformity would say he has to stay there. But under this bylaw, he can move one inch from your property line. His house may be 12 feet today, but then it can go up two and a half stories. And so you end up with a sheer wall, like a foot off your property line, and it's not a new nonconformity. And so the, the issues around that are that, yes, you can rebuild, you can rebuild in your footprint, um, but this allows you to expand an existing nonconformity. And, and while not calling it a new nonconformity, I, I, I know those words get complicated. I hope that makes sense. Thank you. Any additional questions? Seeing none, Mr. McCarthy, I'd like to thank you for being here and letting us hear what you have to say. All right, thank you for inviting me and uh, have a great meeting, everyone. Thank you very much. All right, That's everything on the, that, the petition articles. Uh, now, under old business, we are going to go through all the articles we have on hold um, and take action on them. So the first thing, uh, in the special warrant, um, article number one, which we have on hold, uh, is the snow and ice. Is there a motion to remove the hold? I move to remove the hold. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on removing the hold? 
Any opposition to removing the hold? Hearing none, pass by unanimous consent. All right. Um, is there a motion to recommend or not recommend article number one? I move to recommend. Okay. I'll second. All right. We've got a motion to recommend article number one, the snow and ice. Is there any discussion? And so, uh, for me, I, I, I'm always resistant to voting on something that has no amount, okay? <laughs> but in this case, it, it, it has to happen. It has to happen. Um, with, they'll have the amount by the time of town meeting. They'll modify it there. Um, it's been back, so. We're backed up to the wall. <laughs> right, and, and it's like since, since even that town meeting will we'll more than what we would, with the amount we'd vote to recommend, there's no sense of waiting until then to, to do it right before the meeting. So, uh, any further discussion on article number one of the special? All right, hearing none, we'll take a vote. Jamie? Yes. Richard? Yes. Lee? Yes. Yes. Glenn? No, me, yes. Great, that's. One, two, three, four, five to zero. All right, to recommend that. That puts the special warrant to bed. All right. Nah, nah, nah. All right, so we're dealing with this one's on hold, so we'll skip that for the moment. That brings us into what is, all right, now, we start with 16 through 23, which are now 17 through 24 mm -hmm. in the executed warrant. So, uh, all right. I will entertain a motion to remove the hold of on Article 17 through 24 in the executed warrant. These are all the uh, contract negotiations. I move to uh, uh, remove the hold. Second. All right. Any discussion on removing the hold on Articles 17 through 24? Hearing none. Any opposition to removing the hold on Articles 17 through 24? Mm -hmm. All right. Passed by unanimous consent. Removed. <coughs> All right. There are dollar amounts we each of these are. We, we do have dollar amounts on these now. Yes. All right, so let's start with 17, which is, where are we? There we are. All right, so Article 17 uh, is, the amount is $307, 307407 This is for the uh, personnel administration plan. Appendix B and Appendix C contract increases. Is there a motion to recommend Article 17? I move, yes. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on Article 17? Right. Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Jamie? Yes. Richard? Yes. Lee? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Amy? Yes. Yes. Zero. All right, Article 18. Uh, this is $366,518 for the Mashpee Permanent Firefighters Association, International Association of Firefighters, IAFF contract increases. Is there a motion to recommend this article? I move to recommend. I second. All right, any discussion on this article? Nearing none, we'll take a vote. Glenn? Yes. Lee? Yes. Richard? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Amy? Yes. All right. Uh, article number 19 is $201,746 uh, for the Mass COP Local 324 Unit A Patrol Officers and Detectives contract increases. What was that figure again? 210? Uh, 201746 Thank you. Is there a motion to recommend Article 19? I move to recommend. I second. All right. Any discussion on Article 19? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Glenn? Yes. Lee? Yes. Richard? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Naomi? Yes. 
All right. Article number 20 is $101,192 for the mass COP Local 320 Unit B Sergeant's contract increases. Is there a motion to recommend Article 20? I move to recommend Article 20. Second. All right. Any discussion on Article 20? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Jamie? Yes. Richard? Yes. Lee? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Amy? Yes. All right. Article 21 is 26,773 for the Mass COP Local 477 Administrators Unit C Police Lieutenants contract increases. Is I move to recommend. Is there a second? A second. All right. Any discussion on Article 21? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Jamie? Yes. Richard? Yes. Lee? Yes. Glenn? Yes. I'm um, yes. All right. Article 22, $69,867 for the Service Employees International Union, SEIU, Local 888, Clerical Library Dispatchers Chapter, contract increases. I move to recommend. Second. All right. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Glenn? Yes. Lee? Yes. Richard? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Am yes. All right. Article 23, $94,062 for the Service Employees International Union, SEIU, AFL-CIO Local 888, Public Works Unit A, contract increases. I, motion. I move to recommend. I second. All right. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. Glenn? Yes. Lee? Yes. Richard? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Am yes. Uh, Article 24, uh, $46,850 for the Service Employees International Union, SEIU, AFL, CIO, Local 888, Public Works Unit B contract increases. I move to recommend. Second. Second. All right. Any discussion? Hearing none, uh, we'll take a vote. Jamie? Yes. Richard? Yes. Lee? Yes. Gwen? Yes. Am yes. All right. Take care of those items. All right. Next, uh, uh, articles 30, 31, and 32. These are the solar array articles. Uh, is there a motion to remove the hold on these three articles? I move to remove the hold. Second. All right. Any discussion? Hearing none, any opposition to removing the hold on 30, 31, and 32? Hearing none, passed by unanimous consent. All right, that brings us to Article 30. We'll start there. Uh, this is the uh, amending the bylaws for the table use regulations. Uh, is there a motion to recommend? So moved. Is there a second? Second. A second. Any discussion on Article 30? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Uh, Glenn? Yes. Lee? Yes. Richard? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Naomi? Yes. Uh, Article 31 is amending the land space requirements table uh, for the solar. Is there a motion to recommend? So moved. Is there a, a second? Second. Second. All right. Any discussion on Article 31? Hearing none, we will take a vote. Jamie? Yes. Richard? Yes. Lee? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Amy? Yes. All right. Uh, Article 32 is the new section for the solar energy systems to the Mashpee zoning bylaws. Is there a motion to recommend? Um, I move to recommend. Second. <laughs> Any discussion on Article 32? <clears throat> Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Jamie? Yes. Richard? Yes. 
Lee. Yes. Glenn. Yes. Amy. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. This brings us into uh, the petition articles that we have on hold. All right. Uh, is I'll entertain a motion to remove the hold on articles 39 through 44. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any, any discussion? Uh, hearing uh, any opposition to removing the hold on articles 39 through 44? Hearing none, passed by unanimous consent. All right, uh, that brings us into Article 39, Petition Article to uh, amend the wetland section to increase the buffer from 100 to 150 feet. Is there a motion to recommend? I do. So moved. Is there a second? I second it. Right. Any discussion on this article? Could we do like the select board? Just take more position. That is an option. But at the moment, at the moment, the motion is to recommend. But the what would what would serve us by taking no position? It's just a duplicate. But we, we did it. My, my thinking is we've already we. We voted to recommend yes. the original. Why wouldn't we vote to recommend if, if the other one got pulled? Is, is my thinking? Yeah, you're right. I, mean, I agree. It's identical to the other one. Right. Yeah. So it's right. They, put the, they put the duplicates in in case the original gets pulled at the last second. Right. That, that's, so. what, that's, what, that's, what, that's the planning, I think, is what they plan to do. Right. If the other one passes, then they'll pull this one. Yeah, we voted. We did vote. We did vote to recommend the one. The one that this is to simulate. So, in my opinion, is if we vote vote to recommend the original, we should vote to recommend the. Petition. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll take a vote on recommending Article Thirty Nine. Jamie. Yes. Richard. Yes. Lee? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Amy? Yes. All right. Article 40. Uh, this is the buffer for the permits discuss de permits, determinations, and conditions. Uh, this is the same as what is now Article 37, which we had recommended also. Yeah. So is there a motion to recommend Article 40? So moved. Second. All right. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Jamie? Yes. Richard? Yes. Lee? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Um, yes. Article 41, this is the Santuit Pond. No, no, uh, this is, no, Blue 41, Castle. 41 is a road taking. Yeah, that we still had on holes. All right, so this is the road taking for Blue Castle Drive. Is there a motion to recommend Article 41? I recommend to, uh, to um, I move to recommend. <laughs> Second. I'm getting tongue twisted. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any discussion on Article 41? <coughs> Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Jamie? Yes. Richard? Yes. Lee? Yes. Glenn? Yes. Amy? Yes. All right. I forgot we still have one of the road taking still on hold. 42. 22 is the Santuit Pond um, restrictions. Uh, is there a motion to recommend Article 42? This is the same one. Yeah. Earlier, I move to recommend. Yep. I second. All right. Recommend. Yeah. Uh, 
it's Article 27 that we also recommended. So, any further discussion on Article 42? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Glenn? Yes. Lee? Yes. Richard? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Nami? Yes. All right. Uh, Article 43 this is the uh, Mass Free Zoning Law uh, Regulations. This is the same as Article 30, I believe. Which we just recommended. Yep. So I move to recommend. All right. Is there a second? Yes, I'll second. Any, any discussion? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Glenn? Yes. Lee? Yes. Richard? Yes. Jamie? Yes. And I'm a yes. I deserve to recommend that. Uh, Article 44, which is the same as the Article 32, which we just recommended. Move to recommend. Is Six. there a second? Second. All right. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. Jamie? Yes. Richard? Yes. Lee? Yes. Glenn? Yes. And is it? Yes. 5 0 on that. That now takes care of all the articles we had on hold. And that concludes old business. Oh, Lee. <laughs> now moving into new business. First item is there is a brand new article in the warrant that we have to take care of. It's article number 12. Read that uh, to see if the town will accept the provisions of Massachusetts law, general laws, chapter 83, sections 15C and 15D, relative to the assessment of interest on and the apportionment of unpaid balances of sewer betterment assessments, or take any other action relating thereto. Is there a motion to recommend this article? Was there a dollar amount in there? What's that? Is there a dollar amount? Set? No. This is, a this is, is just uh, accepting, just a accepting oh, just general. Un well, unpaid balances, okay. So it says select board recommends by a vote of blank. Do you happen to know that? Five, five to zero. Like we're recommended article 1250. Is there a motion to recommend this article? I move to recommend. I second. Yeah, all right. Discussion on this article. So, uh, you got a handout of information that was provided uh, regarding this article. Um, basically, in particularly reading the bit from the town council. Um, what this appears to be doing is allowing, by, by uh, accepting those sections of Chapter 83, it allows the town to assess a lower interest rate on um, anything related to, to sewer betterments um, and, the, and to extend the time period that uh, unpaid balances can be apportioned over for 30 years, up to 30 years to make those payments, um, which is a longer time period than the law we would have been going by otherwise. So it basically, it sounds like it's, it's more beneficial to the taxpayer, uh, resulting in a lower interest rate and a longer time period to pay it off. Any further discussion? I move to recommend. Oh, that, we've got that motion out there. <laughs> uh, this, uh, hearing no further discussion, we'll take a vote. Jamie? Yes. Richard? Yes. Lee? Yes. Glenn? Yes. And I'm yes. All right. We will recommend that article. All right. Now that takes care of all the articles in the one. We have done our duty and voted on those. All right. Now, next item on the agenda is 
the explanations of these articles. We have a handout with explanations. Uh, as before, I will read the explanation. Um, I will make a motion. Uh, I'll leave this up to you. Do you want to vote on each article explanation separately? Do you want to go through and edit them all, make any edits, and then vote on the whole thing at once? Let's vote on the whole thing at the end. Mm -hmm. yeah, all right. That sounds fine with me. I'm good with that. All right. So let's we'll start with the first one we've already done, the Capital Stabilization Fund from the special warrant. This article appropriates and transfers funds from revenue available for appropriation to the capital stabilization fund. This article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. Any issues with that explanation? And Mr. Chairman, if we have already all read this, it might not be necessary for you to read them all unless you should for the record. Uh, for the record, I, okay. I okay. just prefer to. Okay. Uh, but I do, we'll just give everybody a chance to make any comments or editorial edits they want to make in this. Because, to be honest, I actually, I, especially those that came in from other people, I haven't read. Okay. <laughs> I just copied and pasted in here. Okay. I haven't had time to read them myself, so this is my chance to hear. <coughs> All right, so moving on to uh, special three, the transfer of the ambulance receipts to the fire department overtime. This article appropriates and transfers $101,450 from the ambulance reserve receipts account to the following accounts, $100,000 to the fire department overtime salary account and $1,450 to the Medicare expense account. Where are we in, the, in this paper mill? We are, we're, we're in the handout. Okay. You would have gotten that, I believe, because it was passed out by um, Susan passed. Well, if you want, I can share this with you. Oh, there's one. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Good, Good night. night. Thank you. All right. Uh, this article appropriates and transfers 101450 from the ambulance reserve receipts account to the following accounts, $100,000 to the fire department overtime salary account and 1450 to the Medicare expense account. There has been an increase in calls for service, thereby requiring additional staffing in the fire department. The funds will cover anticipated overtime costs associated with increasing minimum staffing. This article will have no impact on the current tax rate. Uh, put, make that current year to be consistent. The ones we've already done. Yay. Any issues with that explanation? No, it's pretty straightforward. I move to approve. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just make edits now. We'll, we'll approve them all at the end. Oh, okay. They make it one lap, one huge vote. All right. Uh, special four: the Quashen at School pro, uh, Playground Improvement Program project. Uh, this article appropriates and transfers funds from the Community Preservation Fund budget for appropriation reserved to fund the Quashenet School Playground Improvement Project Phase 2. This will complete the project. This article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. That's good. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, special five, the Edward A. Banks boat ramp. This article appropriates and transfers funds from the Community Preservation Fund budget for Appropriation reserved to fund the Edward A. Baker boat ramp at Pirates Cove Improvement Project Phase 2. This will complete the project. Uh, this article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. Good. It disappeared someplace else, but 
with about a three hundred thousand dollar or with a hundred thousand dollar cost for it. What's that? Did this article or this uh, appear someplace else? This boat ramp for a hundred thousand dollars? No. This is just the explanation of the article. Yeah, yeah it's I not, know. It's not the article. Itself, yeah. All right. Uh, special six. Transfer funds from community preservation to affordable housing. Uh, this article appropriates and transfers $550,000 from the community preservation fund to the Mashpee Affordable Housing Trust. Okay, uh, I think this here needs to have a, the line about no impact. That's what I was wondering if that didn't have to have that. Okay. This article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. All right. Any okay. other edits? None. Um, article 7 of the special. This article will appropriate and transfer funds from the Community Preservation Fund fund balance to fund the LeClaire Village Affordable Rental Housing Project. These funds will be used to develop <coughs> community housing at the spe specified location. This article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. Any, anything else with that article explanation? No. All right, moving on into the annual. Uh, article one is the acceptance of the officer's report. This article requests a vote from the town to accept the reports of the, from the, of the town officers. Uh, the reports of the town officers are presented in the 2022 annual town report, which is available at the town meeting and at town hall. This article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. <coughs> All right, nothing, we'll move on. Uh, article two for the operating budget. This article authorizes the raising, appropriating, and or transferring of funds for the annual budget omnibus, omnibus, omnibus budget for fiscal year 2024. Uh, article 3 of the capital budget. This article appropriates and transfers $6,578,527 from available funds to various department capital accounts as outlined in the chart accompanying this article to enable the town to continue to protect its capital investments. was already approved. Article 5, the Cape Cod Tech Debt Assessment. Uh, this article raises and appropriates $441,810, which is Mashpee's required share of the debt for the Cape Cod Regional Technical District Building Project. Does that need the um, statement about no impact? No, because okay. this, is, this is part of one of the items that goes into calculating okay. Okay. The, the tax rate. This is costs that are covered out of the current year. Uh, article 6, the OPEB. This article appropriates and transfers $250,000 from revenue available for appropriation to OPEB, Other Post-Employment Benefits Irrevocable Trust Fund. This fund was established in fiscal year 2013 to meet costs related to potential post-employment benefits. This article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. Right. Article 7, the revolving funds. This article authorizes the expenditures of the specified amounts for the four revolving funds shown in the table for fiscal year 2024. The amounts re represent costs associated, associated with programs offered by the, these four town entities. These expenses are subject to receipt 
of corresponding levels of program revenue that offset the expenses. If program revenues are inadequate, the expenditures will not be incurred. This article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. Uh, article 8, uh, the Injured on Duty Fund. This article appropriates and transfers $250,000 from revenue available for appropriation to be transferred to the Special Injury Leave Indemnity Fund, Injured on Duty Fund, in accordance with the provisions of General Law Chapter 41, Section 111F. This law states that whenever a police officer or a firefighter is in incapacitated because of injuries in the performance of duty without fault of his or her own, he or she is granted leave without loss of pay for the period of such incapacity. This article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. I wonder if this is a kind of a rollover kind of thing. I mean, if it's not used one year, is it? Yes, it, the, the funds do build up. Okay. Article 9, establish the PEG access budget. This article appropriates $575,902 for budgeted costs associated with providing public educational and government PEG uh, access to various cable TV channels available through the town, including schools. The amount is based on anticipated expenditures from the PEG and cable related fund for the coming fiscal year and is required by the Mass Department of Revenue. Note, the amount appropriated comes from franchise fees for, from Comcast. This article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. Article 10, appropriate $12 million for town wastewater phase one. This article appropriates $12 million to fund completion of phase one, construction of the town's comprehensive nitrogen and wastewater management treatment and disposal improvement project. Take a, I need to take a look at the wording on the article. Uh, all right, so it, says, it does do that. Uh, How is this money raised? Is it? It's not in one year. We are you're not just taking it out of the budget for one year. Uh, the, the, uh, bonds and notes are issued. bonds and notes. Okay. Yes. Does it stipulate where, uh, who's going to do the work? The treasurer. Oh, oh no, the work? Yeah. The work. No, that, that doesn't say anything. This is just about raising the money for it. Um, I think... Uh, I think what's missing is that part of what this article does, it authorizes the treasurer to... Uh, actually borrow the money. Mm -hmm. I so. noticed in Article 11 that it, it says to see if the town will vote to authorize the treasurer. Right. So I was wondering why it wasn't on this one. Right. So what my suggestion is that we take that first line up to the eight million mm -hmm. and make that the first line, just change the amount. Mm -hmm. uh, that the eight million? Uh, no, to borrow the eight million and to appropriate the funds. Mm -hmm. So all of that should go go up as part of that mm -hmm. to and make it to fund the completion after that. Good catch. Yep. And I think that will take care of it. Uh, so that it would read, this article authorizes the treasurer with select board approval to borrow $12 million and appropriate those funds to fund completion of phase one construction of the town's comprehensive nitrogen and wastewater management treatment and disposal improvement project. That sound good to everybody? Yes. Yes. All right. Edit that down to there. Good catch. 
All right, that brings us to 11. This article authorizes the treasurer with select board approval to borrow $8 million and appropriates those funds to pay for five capital improvement projects. If approved, uh, that's the other part that needs to go up above. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, this last line, if approved, this article will require the corresponding approval of a proposition two and a half debt exclusion ballot question. And where does it, which the article? wastewater is a two and a half debt exclusion? No, no. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, should the word appropriates be plural, though, in that sentence? Uh, probably not. Probably for, for With select for board ten. to borrow $8 million and appropriate okay. those yeah. funds. Yeah, for, for 12, for 10. For both, be, yes. Well, for this one here, because it, we're talking about appropriating it to several different places, for several different but projects. you're still it's oh, you're no, authorizing you're right. you're in, one yeah, person yeah, to do you're right. it. You're right. I got it. Sorry, I'm an Not English nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. All right. So that will take care of those. All right. Article twelve. All yeah. right. Yes. This article accepts the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 83, Sections 15C and D, overriding the provisions of Mass Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 80, Section 13. This would result in the town being able to collect a lower interest rate of up to 2% above the net interest rate charged to the town for the project's financing. These provisions also allow all future sewer assessments or unpaid balances to be paid over a period not to exceed 30 years. This article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. We have a big Sounds one on, good to me. We have a big one on next year. Mm -hmm. uh, article 13, which is the old Article 12, was already approved. Article 14, which is the old Article 13, appropriates $486,380 for the Kids Club Enterprise uh, Fund for 2024. Uh, this fund is generated by receipts of the Kids Club Enterprise account. Uh, this will have no impact on the current year tax rate. Will you fix those typos? Yes. And I think uh, the kids' club needs to be spelled correctly. Yeah, and capitalized, but not receipts. Right. Mm -hmm. Is this a revolving kind of fund, too? Did they charge for this? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's all generated. The, so the so money. it's a revolving kind of fund? It's a, well, yeah. They call it an enterprise fund, which makes it a little bit different because it's a business. It's treated like a business okay. as opposed to the revolving funds, which are just um, f funds that, that we put money turn over in, every year. And, and, and uh, expense from the money we put in, and, but the, those funds come, money's coming in to fill, right. fill the hole. Yep. Article 15, the old 14. This article appropriates and transfers $40,000 from the FY 2024 Community Preservation Fund estimated revenues to the Community Preservation Committee Administrative and Operating Expense Account to cover necessary administrative and professional fees and other costs incurred by projects overseen by the Community Preservation Committee. <coughs> This article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. That's good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Article 16, the old Article 15. Uh, approve, uh, this article renews the town's continuing annual participation in a funding mechanism from the Massachusetts Clean Water Trust. 
to provide low-cost betterment loans to homeowners needing assistance to remedy failed Title V septic systems. This article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. All right. Article 17, uh -oh, Article 16. This article will appropriate and transfer the funds stated in the article uh, from revenue available for appropriation to fund the Personnel Administrative Plan, PAP. PAP is the plan pay adjustments for non-union employees. This article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. We need a dollar amount here. Right, and I'll put, the, put it in from the article. All right. To article 18, the old 17. Uh, this article appropriates and transfers the funds from revenue available for appropriation necessary to cover the additional FY 2024 expenditures related to the newly negotiated contract with the Mashpee Permanent Firefighters Association, International Association of Firefighters, IAFF Union. This article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. And Jeff, on those that had no money, uh, dollar amount before, but do now, will you be putting the dollar amount in well, those? Well, I'm, think, I'm, th I'm thinking th this is, says the funds, just says the funds. I think that actually covers it. And what I would actually recommend is going back to 17 and, and saying that it transfers the funds. Yep, okay. Yep. Uh, just so they're all consistent. That makes sense. Yep. Uh, because the the amount is stated in the article, we don't need to state yes, the, right. state the amount right. over again. Okay. So these, so, so okay. these all say the fundamental the okay. fundamental without a specific amount. I think going with that works. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Article 19, old Article 18. This article appropriates and transfers the funds from revenue available for appropriation necessary to cover the additional fiscal year 2024 expenditures. Related to the newly negotiated contract with the Mass COP Local 324 Unit A Patrol Officers and Te Detectives Union, this article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. Article 20, old Article 19 was already approved. Article 21, old Article 20. Uh, the, these funds are part of the negotiated contract uh, between the police union and the town raised from revenue available for appropriation. Uh, Should this start with this article? Um, I'm basically going to get rid of that altogether. Yeah. <laughs> um, and basically... It, Copy and paste yeah, from I'm above? Yeah, I'm going to take the one yeah. above and, and put that just changing the... Uh, the uh, which contract it is, which union negotiation it is. No impact on the... Yes, they're both caught, they're, they're both the uh, police unions, pretty much the same, just lieutenants instead of the sergeants. Mm -hmm. right. It has no impact on the current tax rate. Right, no mm -hmm. impact on the current year tax rate. All right. Um, article 22, the old 21. This article appropriates and transfers the funds from revenue available for appropriation necessary to cover the additional fiscal year 2024 expenditures related to the newly negotiated contract with the Service Employees International Union, SEIU, Local 888 Clerical Library Dispatchers Chapter Union. This article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. Brings us to Article 23, the old 22. Uh, this article appropriates and transfers the funds from a revenue available for appropriation necessary to cover the additional FY 2024 expenditures related to the newly negotiated contract with the Service Employees International Union, SEIU, AFL, CIO, Local 888 Public Works Unit, A Union. This article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. Article 24. Uh, this article appropriates and transfers amount. We'll take that to yep. funds. The funds. Uh, from revenue available for appropriation to fund the negotiated adjustments to the Service Employees International Union, SEIU, AFL-CIO, Local 888, Public Works Unit B. Uh, 
effective July 1, 2023. I, we haven't said that anyplace else, so I'm not going to, I think we can delete that bit. Um, the effective July yeah, 1. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. I think that what we... I think I'm going to make this read like the one above more so because it, it does specify the year of, in the one above fiscal 2024. Yeah, just to make it look consistent, I'll make it look like the one above. Um, article 25, the old 24. This article transfers the care, custody, management, and control of the identified property to the select board. This will allow the select board to either sell or lease the property to the abutting Boys and Girls Club of Cape Cod, Inc. This will have no impact on the current year tax rate. It says not, so we would just knock off that T. This will have no impact. As oh, thank not. you. <laughs> Uh, article 26, Old 25. This article appropriates and transfers funds from a revenue available for appropriation to establish the Human Services Opioid Settlement Account in anticipation of funds to be received resulting from the statewide opioid settlement agreement. These funds will be expended by the Human Services Director to implement strategies to assist individuals who have been affected by opioid use. This article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. Article 27, old 26 has already been approved. Article 28, old 27, uh, the administrative secretary positions. This article promotes one part-time administrative position to a full-time administrative secretary position for the Natural Resources Department. Those should be capitalized. And seeks to appropriate and transfer sixty-six thousand. Okay, check that amount. I think this one. Digit it's missing. Sixty-six zero five five. Mm -hmm. uh, from revenue available for appropriation for various uh, for various accounts to fund in, to fund the increase. This article seeks to transfer and appropriate five hundred seven thousand two hundred fifty from the ambulance receipts account to the fire department's overtime salary account and Medicare expense accounts. Does that Wait, did that get there? in there by accident? Yeah, yeah that, that, doesn't that belong in Article 34? I think we copied and pasted. Yeah, that, this, is a, this is a repeat. Article 28. This was Greg's, and Greg's was number 34 also, so I didn't know if they got squished together. Right. So the amount is actually Should not be there. Got it. Let's see. It just got copied yep. and pasted from. Yep. All right. So let's go back, read up to that thing. This article promotes one part time administrative position to a full time administrative secretary position for the Natural Resources Department and seeks to appropriate and transfer cents from revenue available for appropriation for various accounts to fund the increase. Okay, now we can put in this. No impact. Article will have no impact. Impact on the current year tax rate. is up to number 29, article 28. 
This article appropriates and transfers $75,000 from the Waterways Inf Improvement Fund to the Engineering Permitting Dredging and Associated Expense Account to maintain waterway, pro waterway projects. It is a piece of the overall Waterways Improvement Fund appropriation. This article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. Article 30, Old 29. This article amends Section 17425 H12 of the Mashpee Zoning Bylaw Table of Use Regulations by adding letters SP. This article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. We need to specify what SP is. I, I don't know what SP is. Adding the letters SP. What does SP mean? It's specified in the article itself. Well, never mind, though, no, it's not. I think it's special permit. Yeah, special permit, I think. Yeah. Mm, okay. Why don't we add that in parentheses next to it? Um, it probably wouldn't hurt to add that somewhere. Yeah, just add, just add it in parentheses next to SP. Yeah, is it? And actually, even in the explanation that maybe came from from them, from it doesn't them, state what it, it says, is. They said districts with a uh, special permit. Yep, yeah, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. All right. So if we want, we can add in parentheses. Where is it? Where am I doing it? Right there. They should add it in the article itself, though, right? Mm -hmm. Or can we not? We can't change the article. So we should most definitely add it. Mm -hmm. Special permit is what yeah. it, yeah. Yeah, I think we should add it. All right. <coughs> article 3130. This article requests a vote from the town to amend 174 is it, section. Uh, actually, uh, it should be amend zoning bylaw uh, section 17431 land space requirements table by referencing footnote 15 in the minimum lot frontage column title and adding new foot footnote 15 to read as follows uh, minimum lot frontage be required for the Development of solar energy systems shall be 25 feet. This article would allow the development of solar energy systems on lots that have a minimum of 25 feet. Lot, lot frontage of 150 feet is the minimum requirement for other uses in the article in the town. This will lower minimum. This lower minimum may encourage solar energy on otherwise unbuildable lots. This article will have no impact on the current <coughs> year tax rate. All right. Article 32. This article adds a new section, section 174-45.7, solar energy systems to the Mashpee zoning bylaws, which will expand solar energy systems uses, solar energy systems uses for medium scale and large scale into the C1 and C2 commercial zoning districts. This, sec this section would require that such systems submit a, an application to the planning board for a special permit of compliance to the with to, uh, to the with the? That doesn't make sense. Minimum? Uh, it's a compliance department. with the minimum. Yeah. Compliance with, with the minimum performance to, to standards the, set the, forth to, in this to section. Goes away. Yeah. Um, this article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. Article 33, old 32. This article will upgrade three existing and funded part time positions to full time positions and appropriate and transfer funds from revenue available for appropriation necessary to fund the increased cost of these full-time positions. This article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. 
Article 34, we already approved that one. Article 35, which is the old 34. This article appropriates and transfers 507250 from the ambulance receipts account to the fire department overtime account, which represents ambulance fees collected. This transfer is necessary to address a projected shortfall in the fire department's sal salary account due to increased calls for a service and additional staffing required. This article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. Article 36, the old 35. This article amends section 172.2, uh, jurisdiction of general bylaw sec chapter 172 wetlands to increase the current 100 foot buffer. And it's the words in there. Jurisdiction is spelled wrong, just FAI. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 100 foot buffer to 150 feet. This article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. Article 37, the old 36. This article amends section 172-7A1. Permits, determinations, and conditions of the general bylaw chapter 172 wetlands to increase the buffer zone to wetlands from 100 feet to 150 feet. It will also increase the naturally vegetated buffer strip, NVBS, from 50 feet to 75 feet. This, these increases are to provide increased <coughs> pollution and sediment <coughs> removal from waters entering wetlands and to increase the area available for wildlife habit habitat. Uh, the, this article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. Do you need to have the word feet in there in, in all the places? Um, in the first sentence it says 100 feet to 150 period. Mm -hmm. Should should feet be there too? And then in Probably, the, yeah, in the yes. second one it's not in the first but mm -hmm. it's in the second. Yeah. Yeah. You should say have the feet yeah. there before the parentheses in each case. And the feet at the end should go before the parentheses. <coughs> Alright. Uh, 38, 30, a, old A37. This article appropriates and transfers $10,000 from revenue available for appropriation for the layout and plan design necessary to convert what? Okay. Watson Drive from private way to a public way owned and maintained by the town. This step is a prerequisite for a subsequent road taking, which will also require voters, voter approval. The design ensures that the road will conform to the town's road building standards. This and the sub subsequent construction costs will be recovered by the town via betterment assessment on the properties abutting the road. This article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. I'm Are sorry I didn't follow your font. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not worried about it. <laughs> Select all, and we'll change it all. Uh, besides, the, I could have corrected it when I pasted it in, so. That's okay. You didn't have time to do that, I'm sure. <laughs> Not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Font's the least of my worries. Uh, article 39, old 38. This petition article is similar to Article 35. Uh, amend, let's make that amending. Section 172-2, again, jurisdiction is spelled wrong. Uh, general bylaw chapter 172 wetlands to increase the current 100 foot buffer. Put that. There. So you need to change that to 36 because it's no yep. longer sim similar to yep. Article 35. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Uh, foot buffer to 150 feet. This article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. Jurisdiction is spelled wrong in that yep. one too. Okay. I, I, I did note that. Uh, article 
40, old 39. Uh, this petition article, which is similar to... 37. 37. Mm -hmm. uh, amend section... Okay, let's say... Take, yeah, that, that would work. Okay. Leave that alone. Uh, amend section 172.7A1, permits, determinations, and conditions of the general bylaw chapter 172 wetlands to increase the buffer zone to wetlands from 100 feet to 150 feet. <laughs> it will also increase the natural, naturally vegetated buffer strip, NVBS, from 50 feet to 75 feet. These increases are to provide increased pollution and sediment removal from waters entering wetlands and to increase the area available for wildlife habitat. This article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. I wonder just if copy you and paste all that when you fix the first one. Yeah. 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 And just add this yeah. petition article, yeah. which is similar to. Yep. I wonder yep. if we should, if something should be said in these the 100 to 150 feet numbers that this is uh, not retroactive. This is only for new construction, right? The existing people, they're not going to move their houses. Mm. Yeah, or like if their septic is already built. That's right. Yes, yes. But I think, isn't that stated? It was definitely explained to us when it we asked. It was explained to us, but I wonder if it was, we should have something in, <clears throat> in the wording in here. I can see a lot of people in town meeting are just going to get unglued. They're going to have to figure out they have to pack up their house and move it or a septic system or something. Mm. Uh -huh. We can put it in. Uh... You know, we, when seen... Evan came in and spoke to us about the. Yeah. I distinctly remember that it would not affect people who already had sex that's that's that right. was close. That, I just wondered if we should put it into the, I, right. I, no, I'm, into, I'm just it's kind of late. We've already said this about 18 times now. Um, I hate to go back over everything we've just done. But. No, I, I, it's just one line we need to put in and just think about how to phrase it. Um, if these these. These changes uh, affect new construction only. Okay, will will affect new construction only. These changes will affect new constructions only. That, uh, and, and also um, renovated, right? Or re uh, one structures that are changed. And, uh, if, if so, well, that would be new construction. That would though. still be new, yeah. Yeah. Know, even yeah. though you're doing it to an existing property. Yes. Right. So I will insert that right before the. Last article, line about the yeah. about the impact on the current t tax rate on all. Yep, of I think that's good. And, and that the one you're changing is the petition article. The well, I'm, I'll go original. back and I'm okay. telling you about putting yeah, in for for the original piece. articles as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 We may have to go back into a couple of other articles yeah. too. Uh, 36, 37. Uh, what one were we? Those were here. Were we? 39 and 40. All right. And take care of that. 41, we've already done. Article 42, the old 41. Uh, this is a petition article that is duplicated by Article 20A. Uh, I think it's 26 now. Where are they getting eight twenty-five? I have no idea. I think it was supposed to be an A. Uh, it's been an A instead of the eight. Yeah, uh, twenty-seven should be A twenty-seven. Which is 
changes this into a pawn one. Yeah. Regarding the prohibited use of any... Sir, can you just make that look like the other one? That's, this yeah, this so petition it, article, yep. article, which is similar to yep. A27. Yeah. Uh, copy, copy and paste. Copy explanation from 27. And do we have to throw in the uh, no impact on the current tax rate? Yeah. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take what I've got for 27, 27. which already includes that. Yeah. Um, and amend that to, to read the same thing, other than starting it out as a petition <laughs> article. A twenty seven. All right. Forty three, the old forty two. Uh, this petition article, which is similar to Article twenty nine, amend section one seventy four twenty five H twelve. So that should be Article thirty. Uh, thirty can you do. Uh the Mash P zoning bylaw. Uh Table of use regulations by adding the letters SP. Which we're going permit. to say, yeah. Permit. This article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. Article 44, 43. This article, this petition article, which is similar to Article 31, 32. Adds a new section, section 174.45.7, solar energy systems to the Mashpee zoning bylaws, which will expand solar energy systems usage for medium scale and large scale into C1 and C2 commercial zoning districts. This section would require that such systems submit an application to the planning board for a special permit of compliance with the minimum performance standards set forth in this section. This article will have no impact on the current year tax rate. Article 45. This article amends the zoning bylaws for, by deleting in its entirety section 174-171 raise and replace. This article prevents the zoning board of appeals from approving the raise or replacement of existing non-conforming dwellings <coughs> by special permit. This article will have no impact on the current tax rate. What is the old article? Oh. The, oh, the old no. article 44. All right. Oof. Is there a motion to approve the explanation as amended? So I move. move. Yes. I second. <laughs> All right. Any discussion? Hearing none. Any opposition to approving the articles as amended? All right. Hearing none, objections passed by unanimous consent. So now you have to go and get all this now done by to tomorrow. Go type yeah. it, right? It, it, it's minor changes. It won't take that long. He's still going strong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess so. Uh, next, review and approve the draft opening letter. We've all had a chance to read it. I will tell you that there is one change that does need to be made, which is the number of articles. In the annual town meeting, it was 44, and now it needs to be 45. Yeah. But everything else, um, don't see any changes. Let me know. Um, one of the main things is, are there any, particularly the articles identified as one of the um, townspeople to pay particular interest to. Okay. Um, are there any that I didn't pick that we maybe want to? My only thing was the same as the May town meeting is that horsepower on San Tuit Pond. Mm -hmm. Just because the people that live on that pond, they're either really for that mm -hmm. or they're really opposed to it. But I'm, I, you probably don't have to make special attention for that because everybody who lives there now is fully aware yeah. that this is going to be on. Mm -hmm. I can always point it out. It won't be. I mean, the people who have the bigger motors, my feeling is, are usually people who want to do water skiing or something like that. Because the pond isn't that big that you can open up the engine and Well, but they have, fishing, they have fishing tournaments on that pond. 
Yeah, yeah the fishing is okay. You don't need a, a hundred horsepower motor to go fishing. Not a hundred, mm -hmm. but it is kind of like a gunshot start and yeah. Well, actually, I do have the, that article in there. So they'll just have to go slower to go to their fishing spots. Jeff, I have just one change. Where is it, Jeff? Oh. Uh, mm -hmm. The article I'm in, 27, amends the general bylaws to 170, oh. use of waterways to brave it. Mm -hmm. uh, right oh, yeah, sorry. Yep. Didn't get that far. <laughs> um, on, on Article 11 that you mentioned, you said article will authorize the treasure. It says articles with an S, 11. Would it would just knock off the oh, S there? thank you. attention to the graph and chart information that came along with it. I don't have any idea here how it got, got attached to that. <laughs> All right. Um, is there a motion to accept the opening letter as amended? I move to accept. Second. Any discussion? Any opposition to accepting the opening letter? Hearing on passed by unanimous consent. All right. We're just thankful that you wrote it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jeff. I feel terrible. I did nothing. Well, that's part of the chairman anyway, so. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, make sure, uh, one thing, just check, make sure your names are the way you want it to appear. Where, where is this? On, on, on the uh, opening letter, at the, at the bottom of it. Yep. Yeah, but could I add my middle initial? Sure. It's a P. P. Like in all yeah. all right. And I do that because there are so many Lee Smiths in the world. Yeah. <laughs> Here you are. <laughs> all right. Yeah, we'll go with that. All right, next. The next packet is all <coughs> the charts and tables that we'll be presenting to the everybody. You didn't bring in pizza for this affair? <laughs> <laughs> Not in the budget. <laughs> no coffee, no pizza, no... <laughs> we we want bagels. <laughs> no bagel, yeah, 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 bagels, yeah. Bagels we can come up with. <laughs> All right. For a fee. So, um, so the first one just breaks down um, the operating budget um, by categories. Where, where, where are you reading from? This packet. Can I see that, Jeff? I got that. Oh, you have it? And she didn't either. I would steal it from her. I don't think. I don't think yeah. I got that. If the one you're referring to is the town meeting warrant number two, the summary of changes? Yes, yeah. okay. that should be the first page of it. Oh, is it? I Somehow I separated mine, so I... Um, no, I think that came... That's that was it. with the, that yeah. was with the letter. Make them yeah. Is that stapled? This isn't, no. Okay. <coughs> Not a problem. I already have one, Susan, so I'm all set. All right. Um, let's table that for the moment. Um, I'm lost. Next item, I will entertain a motion um, to authorize the chair to make final edits and to have final approval of the Finance Committee report proof for printing. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we, we, did, we did that a cappella. Rock, paper, scissors. Oh, right. second. I didn't, I didn't even hear you. <laughs> All right, Lee motion. And Jamie second. second. Um, just so to, to make it easier to get it through, yeah. um, to have it one person yep. with, with the authority uh, on behalf of the entire committee. Yes, um, we appreciate you. <laughs> and you have all the experience to do that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, any opposition to the proposal? No. Uh, hearing none, passed by unanimous consent. All right. 
Susan know the result of that so she can put it in the minutes and then we can get on with the charts. <coughs> it didn't get better than I thought. Yeah, I thought yeah. we'd be here till 10. Oh, I did too. I bet, it up. I bet on 10. And I got to work about 4.30 this morning. <laughs> so. I hope you don't have to be there at 4.30 tomorrow morning. Uh, I have to be there early, but we'll see what time I get out of bed. What time does the uh, shop there open? It opens at 6.30. My bagel baker gets there at 4. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Four I just flashed back in an old Dunkin' Donuts commercial. Yeah, commercials. time to make the donuts. Make the donuts. Yeah, he's time to make the bagels every morning. You said at 4 o'clock? He is there at 4 o'clock, yes, and every day. The, and you're there at 4.30? Uh, I just have, I mean, I have 19 notebooks full of stuff that has to get done, and I just can't check enough of them off in a, mm -hmm. in a day. Yeah, yeah. I've been yeah. working 15, 16. Yeah, oh. it's, it'll get... It'll get better. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. I know everybody isn't here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, there's, there's a lot more than just those. Yeah, that was part, that mistakenly came with the with the, with the, the open letter. letter. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think that last year I drafted and included some of them originally, and then we came up with a lot more. <laughs> All right, so the, these are, are what are proposed to go into the, the uh, report. And the first is the uh, basically the breakdown of the op operating budget article, Article 2, mm -hmm. um, showing where a summary of where all the money is going um, between the major departments. Who created all these? You? I, a lot. A lot of it's already in the spreadsheet. Yeah. The, the, yeah. the, the big trend spreadsheet we do. Yep. So it just pulls the information. Okay. Mm -hmm. So most of it is it's just verifying I'm getting the right amounts. <laughs> okay. So most most of this is is real easy. It's just updating a cell here and there. Um, the second one basically shows the spending trend since 2018. Bless you. Bless you. Um, the next one, the pie chart, is the sources of revenue. Basically shows down where the revenue for the, the fiscal 24 is coming from. Uh, next is a breakdown of um, the budget by uh, what we call a function, whether it's general government, public safety, public works, debt service, benefits, and education. And as you can see, education is the biggest part of yep. our budget. Mm -hmm. um, the next uh, mm -hmm. is a new uh, table. Can I make a comment here? I brought this up the last time at the town meeting, and I had, I had trouble with it until they started explaining it. Well, hold on. We will go to the next. The next is a table, which shows the revenue appropriation, the amount of money of revenue we're generating and how the appropriation breaks down. So these... Revenue, the total revenue is $75,688,220. Appropriation from the operating budget is 66,883,590. The capital improvement budget is 6,578,520. The technical high school is $1,026,103. And then there is 1.2 million for the overlay. That equals the 75,688,220, which is being raised. Explaining what the overlay is, the overlay is an amount set aside to cover uh, any amount of tax levy lost when there is a portion of the levy which is either abated or exempted. So that, so that we are able to get that tax levy, um, and this is a state requirement. 
mm -hmm. that, that you, you establish an overlay mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. Is it sort of like a reserve? Or? Yes. Okay. I mean, it's yes. set aside. Yes. It's set aside, but for a specific purpose, and it can only be used for that purpose. Mm -hmm. So does that answer your question, Dick? It's different than it was. I mean, last year what happened, we had these pie charts, and it showed the amount of revenue yeah. that was coming in, yeah. and it showed the amount of expenses. Right. And it was a much, it was a big difference in the numbers. Right, and that's what this, this is table pretty clear. explains. Yeah. That's right. That's what, that's what there's, that <laughs> is there to do. Nice work, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it looked like there were several million, several million dollars that was floating around. In right, and, it, and that's because it it serves other purposes than just the operating budget. Um, the next table is just a summary of the tax rate calculation and how it's arrived at. So that this year the tax rate is six dollars and eleven cents proposed. Uh, the next table uh, basically is a summary of the tax levy. Does it say that six dollars and eleven cents in the? Yes. Yes. It's. Um, uh, right line E. Six eleven, right there. Line E in the far right column. Bless you. Excuse me. Uh, the next table is a new chart as well. Um, it's basically summarizing the tax levy, how much we're allowed to levy, uh, it, which is 59872602 That's the maximum the town, the, the town can raise. The 57554428 is what we're actually proposing to raise from, from the tax levy, uh, leaving an excess levy capacity of 2318174 Um and Don explained to me that that does not go away. When they do nice. next year's rate, they start with the actual full amount, the $59 million. Yep. So we're, we will, would still be able to raise that money in the future. Cool. We're actually going to spend less money this year. Yeah, we're going to ra raise less money than, than we're allowed to. Mm -hmm. uh, next is just a summary of the CIP projects. Uh, which is, shows a huge jump, when they, but it includes not only the six million from the, the capital improvement projects, but the twelve million for the for the wastewater and the eight million for the um, other additional bond for capital improvements. Mm -hmm. uh, next is uh, the tax rate tax rate over the past few years. Should that, should that information be presented on this page, what you just said, the 12 million and the 8 million? Should that be mentioned? It's I, mentioned in charts previous. Is it not? I don't, I thought I had it on here, but you're right, we, it probably should be something there I, I think because when, when, when you look across here, the huge jump. As you, just as a, as a citizen, you look across and you see the numbers from 2021, 20, 2022, 23, you, you got a million, then all of a sudden you got 26 million. You say, yeah. well, where it is, you know, it looks like we're Well, around. they probably know because they see Robert Hour digging up the whole town. No, I'm just talking <laughs> about the, I'm just, a, no. just Joe Citizen. You no, know. well, I, I think adding a note. Explaining the, the huge yeah. increase, it would be a good idea. Thank you. Because it all adds up if you look at the exact yeah, you know, yeah, the 12 million, yeah, yeah, 8 million, yeah, 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 6 no, million. stealing the money, but it's just, yeah, yeah. It just, it, it just, as a layman, you look across, mm -hmm. the, look across there. That's all right. Uh, let me see. The next, uh, the total tax rate. Uh, Shown over the past few years, you can see we're actually going down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like we're pretty tame compared. Like if you just take a look around, yeah. like at Sandwich. Yeah, and and there are several things that make up the tax rate now. As you can see, we've got the levy itself, we've got the water charge, um, the the community preservation two percent, and the two percent for the wastewater infrastructure fund. 
and this next chart breaks down the estimated tax rate by function. Um, what goes to water, public works, public safety, government. Again, uh, highest amount, of, uh, as would be expected, because that's where the biggest expenses is in education, which is 36%. Um, and the last table, it basically shows the long-term debt remaining. Mm -hmm. Any additional comments, questions, or anything regarding the charts? No. This was this a lot of work, Jeff. <laughs> Thank you. On this chart, it says 2.31. Is that $23 million? No, $2.31. Of the uh, $6.48 of the tax rate, two thirty one of it goes to... Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, entertain a motion to accept the... Um, revised uh, and amended versions of the charts. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any, any opposition to accepting the amended charts? Hearing no. none, passed by unanimous consent. Uh, and Susan, just to let you know while uh, you are out, uh, Lee motioned to authorize the chair uh, to make the final edits. Jamie seconded, and it was passed by unanimous consent. <coughs> All right, that takes care of that. I've got no additional topics. Does anybody have anything they need to feel burning desire to discuss? <laughs> yes. I yeah. would like to thank you, Mr. Yes. Chairman. Yes. Thank for all you. The second. Great work you have done. I second. Well, thank you. <laughs> Two attaboys and. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so that means while, while I originally had on the, the agenda that our next meeting, meeting was March 30th, it will not be. Uh, our next meeting will actually be on April 6th. Oh, we get next week off? Yes, you do. That is we blessed. have vacation next week. Yes. I need the rest. <laughs> <laughs> I second. imagine you okay, do. I'll actually be busy editing over the next couple of weeks. So, all right. You have to turn all this in tomorrow? Yeah, most of it's already there. Yeah. Just minor, minor edits. Minor tweaking yeah. at this point. And a lot of yeah. copy and paste. Yeah. yeah. So it's not nothing that bad. Do you have a stapler over there? Um, is there a motion to adjourn? Hey, hey. To adjourn. Oh, oh, second. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? Second. Any opposition to adjourning? Hearing none, passed by unanimous consent. Oh Thank you, everybody, for all your work.